Welcome to the NSIC Spotlight, the voice of the NSIC student athletes. Powered by GPAC, GPAC, growing people and companies. I'm your host, Nick Corner, Assistant Commissioner at the Northern Sun. Today, we are joined by Jake Tordson of the Concordia St. Paul men's track and field team. Jake, thanks for joining us on the spotlight. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, let's get started by you telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually a grad student this year. Um, so I've been around the the track program at Concordia for uh, like five and a half years now. So uh, definitely pretty familiar with everybody around here. Um, I'm originally from Wausau, Wisconsin, which if you're looking at a map is, is pretty much right in the middle of the state. Um, and at Concordia, I've I've majored in finance and then also pursuing a an MBA with a healthcare management emphasis. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to make use of the, the extra years that I've spent here as well as I can, so. Standing, all right. Well, you have some ties to Concordia St. Paul. <laughs> Tell us how you ended up as a Golden Bear. I do, yeah. So my dad was actually a member of the basketball team here um, in the early 90s. And then his siblings went here and then my grandpa also went here. So. There's definitely some family history, um, and that's honestly probably the way that I I kind of, I guess, knew about Concordia. Um, and so that was just one of the schools that I reached out to when I was thinking about um, competing in collegiate sports. Um, and I don't know, I guess I guess it kind of just worked out that uh, the, the track team here was interested in me, um, and my family had a lot of history here, so it, it made sense. Quite the legacy. A uh, three-sport athlete in high school. You also played basketball and football along with track and field. Uh, how did you end up picking track and field as your collegiate sport? Uh, yeah, is is an interesting decision, I think, at the time. Uh, I think most people who knew me kind of assumed that I would play basketball in college. Um, but I had some ankle issues um, in my senior year, and it became pretty painful to, to even, you know, like cut or anything like that. Uh and I did have two surgeries, but track and field was kind of the sport that I came to enjoy the most because there was, I guess, less pain and, and less pressure associated with it. Um, and then also one of my better friends in high school was big into track. So he kind of got me into that, uh, I guess, like the summer before my senior year, which is really when I first kind of heard about uh, the decathlon and the heptathlon. Uh, and so I had kind of an interesting background of just like event selection in high school. I would high jump and then I would go over and throw shot and disc, which is not a, a typical combination. But uh, looking at the, you know, the multi events, that seemed to be something that I could get into since I, I had a background in throwing and jumping. So uh, I, I ended up choosing to go into track just because it was really something new and something that I thought I could be good at. Um, not really knowing what I was getting into though. <laughs> sure. Well, it looks like you made a wise decision as last weekend, you set the na nation's number one mark in the heptathlon. That's the 11th best performance in NCAA division two history with a score of 5,580. Tell us what it's like to compete in a heptathlon and how you approach each of those seven different events. Yeah, I think, you know, the thing about doing the HEP or the deck is that it's really just as much of a mental battle as it is a physical battle. Um, and you kind of have to reset after every event, um, whether the previous one went well or it went poorly. Um, for me this weekend, I, I started off with a PR in the 60, um, which is great, but you kind of have to come back down to earth and know that you still have to execute in the next event. Um, I think that mental aspect is probably something that I've improved you know, managing just as well as I have in the physical aspects of the sport. Um, it can be really difficult to bounce back after a tough event, uh, but you kind of have to. And usually your your best scores are not going to be ones where you have your best individual performances, but maybe just you are the most consistent overall. So um, it's definitely a unique event, but I think the people that do it kind of take pride in, in even just finishing one. Um, so to be able to do it at a high level is is pretty satisfying, I guess I'd say. Yeah, at a high level, indeed, as you were the, the top finisher in the long jump, shot put pole vault, and were second in the 60 hurdles and the high jump. Which events do you excel at and which ones do you, uh, you know, not uh, favor as much? I'm guessing the thousand might be in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the, the high jump is probably usually my strongest event. And I think that was actually one of my worst events in the heptathlon last weekend. So 
Um, I guess kind of related to what I said earlier, you might not always have the best individual event, but but overall it can be pretty great. So, uh, but I think in general, like the the jumps, so long jump, high jump, pole vault are usually my strengths um, compared to the field and probably also points wise. Um, and then hurdles is an event that I've really started to to excel at. Um, you know, points wise, it's it's probably my highest scoring event, nearly 900 points. So. Uh, that's obviously pretty important. Um, the two that I that I look forward to the least are probably the first one and the last one. Uh, historically, I haven't been the fastest guy in the multi, so I usually do get pretty nervous for the sixty. And then, obviously, the thousand is is just a painful event for the multis because we don't we don't train all that much for it, so you just kind of got to get through it. But uh, I will say the feeling when you finish the thousand is is definitely worth all the nerves that come before it. So uh, you talked about training. Uh, talk about the relationship between you and your coach. Seven different events. Uh, how many different coaches do you have, or is it just one? Or how do you get ready for this these type of events? Yeah. So um, the main coach that I work with is is Coach Sam. He's our head coach, and he kind of facilitates. I guess I would say all of our practices. Um, and then if we need some more specialized help. Uh, we'll go to the throws coach, uh, coach Lena, or we'll go to our, our vault coach or Colin, who's one of our jumps and hurdles coaches. Um, you know, we kind of bounce around depending on what we need. Uh, but at the end of the day, it kind of all comes back to Sam and the plan that he's kind of putting together for us. Um, and I've, this is my sixth year working with him. So I have a lot of trust in, in what he's putting together for me and that he'll have me ready, uh, at the time of the, the year when it matters. So, that's kind of, I guess, what we've been continuing to build towards. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll stick to our plan. Uh, maybe having a, a bit of a unexpected performance last weekend, but we're still going to kind of follow what, what we had planned for already. And hopefully, you know, that plan leads us to something better at the end of the year. So. That's right. The end of the year is not too far away. NSIC championships are set for February 24th and 25th back at Myers Fieldhouse. Um, come the day of competition, do you have any special routines that you follow when you get ready to compete? Uh, I'm not too particular. I guess I guess the one thing you could say is I, I like to drink just a black coffee before the, the race. Um, it gets me going a little bit, but I'm not someone who can handle like a pre-workout or anything like that. So that seems to be something that, that I go to just about every time. Um, and then I, I, I really just try to tell myself that the 60 doesn't really matter that much in the multi and that <laughs> regardless of what I run, the, the rest of the competition will be all right. So that's maybe just a little bit of sandbagging that I do before the, before the competition starts. But, but other than that, I don't, I don't really do anything crazy. So. All right. Black coffee before a race. All right. So, uh, yeah. Final question for you. <laughs> Uh, what advice would you give to a young student athlete to help them in their development to become a collegiate athlete? Um, I think you just have to be be very patient and then also, I guess, trust in yourself that you will get better. Um, I've got a lot of experience improving over the years. If, if you go way back um, in the results, you'll see that my freshman year, I was last place in the conference hept heptathlon. So um, I think you got to trust in, in the plan that you have and then leave no stone unturned uh, in your pursuit to get better. Um, there are always ways that you can learn or train or, or really anything to get better. So if you really want that and you continue to pursue that, uh, chances are you're going to improve. All right, some great advice right there. Uh, <laughs> reminder to fans that select NSIC track and field events are aired live and free on the NSIC network. That will include the NSIC championships come the end of the month. Check out northernsun.org for more information on all things NSIC. That's going to wrap up this week's show. Thanks again to our sponsor, GPAC. Jake, thank you for joining us, and best of luck to the Golden Bears the rest of the season. Thanks, and thanks for having me.